Hi again guys, uh, this video is a tutorial on the 3x3x5 proportional um, keyboard I've got here from Calvin's Puddles. You may have seen my recent um, budget puddling video that shows you how to make yourself one of these um, if you've got the parts to do it. Um, I just thought I'd throw together a quick tutorial about how to solve it as well. Um, first of all, scrambling. As with all shape shifting cuboids, you need to make sure that you scramble it without shape shifting to begin with because as soon as you start shape shifting your bandage pieces together so these can now long no longer be separated from the pieces from the layer below them so you need to make sure everything is scrambled before you do any shape shifting moves and that applies to all shape shifting cuboids not just this one and obviously you want to give it as as good, as good a scramble as you can make it as challenging as you possibly can otherwise there's no point solving it you know you want it to be as as good a solve as you can get as with any puzzle as far as I'm concerned so yeah it's just 180 degree turns on the long sides and the rest can do whatever turns you like so you'll only be mixing up the red and orange sides at the moment on, on the small faces And that should about do it that by that I think and then you can start doing the shape shifting turns like so which is pretty straightforward just turn anything any direction you want simple as that and soon enough it starts to look a complete and utter mess like this and I absolutely love it I, I love the way shape shifted cuboids look when when they're scrambled it's they just look ridiculous <laughs> Alright, I think I'm going to call that scrambled now. Okay, so the strategy you're going to use for this is the same as with all um, cuboids, um, shapeshifter cuboids. You have to figure out what to solve first because what happens is now it's bandaged. Yeah, it's not a three by three by five anymore. If you look at it on every side, you'll have finally have one, two, three layers to turn, and it's the same on every face. So basically what you've got left here is a 3x3x3. Three by three by three. Now, presumably, if you're watching this video, you're going to already know how to solve a 3x3x3. Three by three by three. So that's basically what you're going to go and do. Um, so what you need to do is ignore the, um, the, the... If you look at this piece here that's bandaged together, the blue and orange piece and the green below it, you're going to ignore the green. You're just going to solve the blue and orange bit you're going to completely ignore the green part. Now, you don't actually have to solve them at this point. All you need to do is put them in a position that removes their shape shifting properties. You can see I've moved this up to here. But I can also leave these two red edges here. Um, they don't actually need to be solved. And I can just put any other... Oh, that happens on these puzzles from time to time, unfortunately. The edges fall apart. You can just put any edges up there. So they don't have to be the right colour. So you see there, I've now got a cross on this face, on this orange orange face, the face with the orange centre, that's the face I'm solving first. So then I need to, just need to put corners in, so again it doesn't matter whether they're red or orange, but as long as I've got a corner that's the extended type pieces in there, that's fine. And then put another one in there. And another one in there. And finally, one in there. And you can see I've now got a full face of red and orange there, which is basically returning it back to its kind of cuboid shape. You can now turn this face, which is what we want. We're not worried about what position everything is in at the moment. We just want to make sure we're returning it to cuboid state. Now, the next stage we're going to do is to insert the centre layer edges like you do on a 3x3. Three three. In this case, you do need to insert them in the correct place, and you'll see why later on. So basically you're looking for any edges in this top layer that are that don't have red on them. I can see that I've got the white green here so I'll just, you can insert these whichever way you want if you do them differently that's absolutely fine as long as you're doing it the same way as you do a 3x3. Three three. So I'll put my white edge there so it's matching the white center and do first of all I'll put that edge back together stupid thing Right, try that again. 
I got the white green edge and I do R U R U R U prime R prime U prime R prime and that's my white green edge in position between the white and green centers so I just continue like that on that layer I've got the white blue here so that can do the same R prime U prime R prime U prime R prime U R U R oh for good gracious sake <coughs> I've actually got probably got this a little bit too loose at the moment, which is why this is happening in a bit. It's catching a little bit. That's <coughs> not a huge deal. So yellow blue edge piece here. We'll put that in its correct place. So R U R U R U prime R prime U prime R prime. And finally the yellow green edge pieces around here. So put it over the green and R U R U R. U prime, R prime, U prime, R prime. You can see I've got the entire centre layer solved now. So then what I need to do is the normal OLL, um, orienting the last layer on the 3x3, three three, which is this red face. Now you can see I've got three edges the right way up, because they're um, sticking out the same extent as the centre does. They're lined up with the centre, so they're, those two are right, which means I need to do that one and that one need to alter them, so you, that's just the same as you do on a 3x3, three three. you've got the um, stripe across the centre um, horizontally, and then you do the F R U R prime U prime F prime, and I've got the top cross, and then all I need to do is solve, orient the corners, so this will just be a soon with that there, obviously you need to do it however you're um, final faces organized with your regular 3x3 algorithms. So R U R prime U prime R U2 R prime and as you can see that's now we could have returned it to its cuboid state. So moving along the next thing we need to do is to solve um, two layers together like it would you would a regular 3x3x2 three by three by or domino cuboid. So I'm going to completely ignore the top and bottom layers, the red face and the orange face for now. All I'm going to solve is the layer above the centre layer and the layer below the centre layer. We're going to imagine that's the top layer of our domino and that's the bottom layer of our domino. And this is why we had to solve the centre layer properly before um, to get everything in position so we don't have to mess about it with solving those now. Um, now you could have solved the red and orange faces as you normally would so that you know everything would actually solved while we were doing the 3x3. Three three. The reason I don't is because while you're doing these layers and making turns it's easy to turn those. If you were having to turn slice layers every time it'd be a bit annoying so I, I just find it easier to do it this way. Uh, there's no reason why you absolutely shouldn't solve those at the beginning but I find it easier this way. Okay so I'm going to start with this layer just below the centre layer. We need to start by putting our edge pieces in place which um, are essentially these um, sort of centre pieces that are above and below the centre layer. This green here counts as an edge in this part. So we've got a green in place here. Um, so we need a yellow edge piece here. We've got one in the top layer around here so just rotate it above the yellow face and rotate it 90 degrees. Now you need to make sure that you keep this edge now on your right hand side. This is your workspace until you've fixed the centre that you've already solved. So we need a white edge here so we rotate that white face around to our workspace. I've got a white edge here so rotate that 180 degrees that puts that white edge in and put everything back where it came from. So I've now got white, green and yellow edge pieces in place so I just need a blue one here. We don't need to worry about the workspace that we were using now because everything is now solved around the centre so we can rotate it to any side we like. I've got this blue edge here so bring that above the blue centre and do an R2 to put that blue edge in position and that's blue, yellow, green and white edges all in position now. Now I do need to keep this workspace on the right hand side now because I have now unsolved that. So we're going to start putting the corners into the lower layer. Remember we just mean this one that's below the centre layer when I say that. Now I'm going to start with blue yellow here because I can see that I've got the piece here. Now you need to make sure you get the correct corner piece to go there. The blue and yellow where the the blue is on the opposite face to the blue center, sorry the blue edge, and the yellow is opposite from there. So you don't want it where have I got the yes I have I've got the other blue yellow here. You can see that if I 
match the yellow upon the yellow face and the blue on the blue face um, that looks kind of like it would be right but once it's inserted there it will actually be backwards you'll have the blue here and the yellow there so make sure it's the one where the colours are on the, the other face so the yellow is on the blue face the blue is on the yellow face and then you perform the normal domino corner swap algorithm which is R2 U R2 U prime R2 and as you can see that's put that blue yellow in position we've fixed our workspace so we can turn the cuboid any way we like to find our next thing so let's have a look we've got a green yellow in the upper layer we've got one there is that the right one Turn it over the, the position, and it is. You can see the yellow is on the green face, green is on the yellow face, so that's the correct piece. So R2, U, R2, U prime, R2. Keeping our workspace on the right hand side, because we've now unsolved this centre piece. Let's rotate the cube around until we've got a, a space here that needs a piece solving, so we need a green and white piece. So there we've got a green and white piece, the green is on the white face. The white is on the green face so that's good remember this is the white on this leg because we've rotated this around at the moment so this is the white face this is the green face so insert this corner r2 u r2 u prime r2 that's in position we can rotate this layer back where it belongs the workspace is fixed so we don't need to worry about that <coughs> so we've just got one piece that needs inserting this blue white edge piece and as luck would have it, it's right above it. We've got the white on the blue face and the blue on the white face, so that's right. And so R2 U, R2 UI, R2, put it in position. Keeping the workspace on the right hand side because it's broken at the moment, we look in the top layer to see if we've got headlights. Now, as it turns out, we've got headlights on every face. Um, so let's put it in a situation that you might come across instead. Oh, then. So this is a situation where you're more likely to come across where you haven't got all the corner pieces solved in this upper layer. When I say upper, obviously, again, I mean the one just above the centre layer. So what you want to look for is a set of headlights, which means you've got two corner pieces of the same colour. Now, this, this, the edge piece between them may be solved, it may not be solved, it doesn't matter either way, just as long as you've got two pe corner pieces on the same layer, the same colour. If you do... You put those on the left hand side and perform the, the adjacent corner swap algorithm which swaps this corner at the front right and this corner at the back right. Keeping our workspace on the right hand side we do R2, U, R2, U prime, R2. The U here is the layer just above the centre layer. So then you do U prime D. So the D is the layer, layer just below the centre layer, and R2, UI, R2, U, R2. We turn the down layer back to where it came from, and you can see that the top layer now, if you rotate it, all the corners happen to fall into position. If you get to a situation where none of the corners were solved in the upper layer, or you could, you could only ever rotate it to a position where one would be solved, all you do is perform that same algorithm, the one I've just done, the adjacent corner swap in any position that will give you a pair of headlights on one side and then just continue as we did putting the headlights on the left and doing the algorithm again okay so now we need to swap the edges on this upper layer and um, keeping our workspace on the right hand side because this will make it mess up if you don't the first thing I always look for is see if it's got any pieces that can go to the opposite face. In this situation, I haven't. So what I need to do is an adjacent edge swap. This algorithm will swap this edge with the white one, and this edge, the green one, they will exchange those over. So that will solve the green edge. So let's do that to start with. So that'll be R2, U, R2, U, R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, U, R2, U2 u prime r2 you see that's put the green in position so let's just rotate that to where it belongs and see what we've got left we've fixed our workspace so we don't need to worry about that for now we can do anything we like on any side i can now do an opposite edge swap with this white to put it here to solve the white edge so that's a very simple algorithm that's r2 u2 r2 u2 r2 u2 our workspace is on the blue face, just remember that for a second. So we've got the green edge solved, the white edge solved, so we've just got the yellow and the blue left to do. Um, those are 
Easy enough. All we've got to do is an adjacent edge swap again, so we just swap to the front and the right. So put the one on the front, one on the right. Remember to keep your workspace on the right hand side. So that's R2, U, R2, U, R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, U, R2, U prime, R2. Now at this point of the solve, you will sometimes find you come across this situation where you've got this edge is now unsolved and this one unsolved. The the workspace got unsolved when you finish swapping the last two edges around on the top layer. But this is very simple to fix. All you've got to do is put one on the left, one on the right front. So the blue and white and the blue and yellow. This algorithm will swap that blue and white with the blue and yellow. So with those on the left and right of the front face, you do a U2. With when your U is the layer just above them, U2, then you do a R2, F2, U2, F2, R2, U2, F2. As you can see, that's fixed both of those, so that's easy enough. So then all we've got to do is our top and bottom layers, the red and orange faces. Um, I'll start off with the red face, just because I can see I've got a red, blue, inserted already and I need to let's see we can put the red green in so right up rotate it above the green face and do an R2 to put that in. Um, then I need to keep the workspace here so I need a red yellow here so let's put the red where that goes into the workspace. The red yellow is here so rotate it around 180 degree turn puts it in and rotate everything back where they belong. So all those three edges are in I just need the red and white edge which is above the white face now so just rotate that into position. So next I need to start putting all my red corners in, so keeping the workspace on the right hand side, I can add right, white, green and red first, so put that above where it belongs and do R2 U, R2 U prime R2, that fixes our workspace so we don't need to worry about that for now. Let's see, red, white and blue is above where it belongs so let's do that one, so R2 U, R2 U prime R2. Need to keep our workspace on the right, so bring the gap around to the workspace that we're using. So red, blue, and yellow, which is above there, that's fine. R2, U, R2, U prime R2. That's fixed the workspace. And final piece we need to do is red, green, and yellow. Put it above where it belongs. And one more time R2, U, R2, U prime R2. So, that's the bo bottom layer fixed, um, next we look at our top layer and see what we've got. You can see that we've got one set of headlights here with the blue face, so keep the blue two blue corner pieces that are solved on the left hand side, the two corners that we'll swap on the right front and right back, and do the corner swap algorithm again, so R2, U, R2, U prime, R2, U prime, D, R2, U prime, R2, U, R2. Put the D layer back where it belongs and you can see we've got all our corners solved in the top layer. So now all we've got to do is, as it turns out, we've just got two edges left to solve. Um, we've got two that are unsolved here so that's nice and easy. We just need to do the adjacent edge swap algorithm. So that swaps the one on the front and the one on the right hand side again. Make sure the workspace is on the right hand side. And one last time, R2, U, R2, U, R2, U2. R2, U2, R2, U, R2, U prime, R2. And that's it, simple as that, the puzzle's solved. Um, fun little puzzle, not too difficult, um, but a good introduction to cuboids for definite. So if you're in, looking to get into cuboids and learn how to solve them, then this is definitely a good introduction of, and a fun puzzle to have in your collection. Alright then guys, that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care now.